Okay, moving on to section 2.3, linear equations and two variables. All right, what are we talking about here? All right, well, we talked about this a little bit last time. Okay, linear equations uh, are the equations that, well, they look like, well, again, from last time, something like this, where you have um, an x and a y. Um, the x variable only has an exponent of 1, and the y variable only has an exponent of one. Okay, so that excludes items that look something like this, right? So nothing like this, um, nothing like this, okay? None of that. Uh, it's possible that it looks kind of strange, like two x uh, plus y equals three x minus one. Uh, that would technically be considered a linear equation because let's check out the exponents, one, one, and one, right? So as long as you have x and y, and everything is just a one, okay, all the exponents are ones, you are looking at a linear equation, okay? So it's not hard to spot uh, a linear equation um, or a nonlinear equation, okay? So let's actually do a quick example of a, well, I'll let you decide. Example one, is this a linear e or, or, or a nonlinear equation? Okay, and let's make it look weird. So 11x plus y over three plus 12y is equal to seven. Okay, well, let's kind of take a look at that. I see I have x and y, so starting off pretty good here. My exponent on x is the understood hidden one. And my exponents on y, again, also ones, although I see two y's, but I don't see any y squared, so I think this is good. It turns out, yes, this is a linear equation. Fancy. All right. So linear, they're pretty easy to spot, which again, this is what we're focusing on right now. We're going to get to some nonlinear stuff later, but that's going to take place after, um, I think, this entire chapter. Okay. So after this up upcoming exam. Okay. Um, Let's talk about different ways to write out linear equations. Okay, there are, ma are two major forms. There's actually more than that, but there's two that I think are important. Okay, the two forms are slope intercept, probably the most important one. Oops, I go pushing the wrong button. There we go, intercept. Slope intercept form, which you may be familiar with y equals mx plus b and if you think back to that uh, maybe you remember these terms m represents the slope let me write it out like this uh, slope that is m and the y intercept hence the term slope intercept is the point zero comma b the constant term right so that b it's going to be plugged into a point an ordered pair where it's the y value okay and zero is the x okay that's slope intercept uh, we'll also talk about standard form standard form just looks nicer than slope intercept that would be a constant or a coefficient a x plus a coefficient b times y equals c. And a is a positive um, whole number. b and c can be negative, but they're usually whole numbers as well. Okay, you're not going to see decimals or fractions there. Okay, so it just looks nicer. Okay, so uh, slope intercept and standard form. Okay, so let's do an example really quick where we have to kind of rearrange um, something. So our second example here, we have 11x plus two times y plus x equals seven. First of all, let's determine whether or not this thing is a linear equation or not. Okay, so I'll take a quick look at it. And I have to be a little careful here. I do see my exponents of one everywhere. Uh, only thing I wanna watch out for is this two that's being multiplied here and here. Okay, I should not read that y simply as y, right? I should think about that y as two y right? Still doesn't change the exponent, but just want to make sure that I'm aware of that because it is multiplied times two. So that's really a two Y right there. All right. So it's a linear, it's, it's definitely linear. Um, I'll write that down just because we said it, although that's not really what I'm asking here. What I want to do for this problem 
is to write this in standard form. And slope intercept. So let's start off with standard. All right, so 11x plus 2y plus x. I'm going to go ahead and distribute that 2, right? 2 times y is 2y. We just talked about that a second ago. And 2 times x is 2x equals 7. Okay, and then let's see, like terms, 11x plus 2x would be 13x. And that's in standard form, right? Ax plus by equals constant term c. So that's in standard form. Okay, let's also, let me kind of give myself some more room to work with here, um, write it in slope intercept form. And the way to do that is just to continue rearranging the equation until you get y by itself. So 13x plus 2y equals 7. Imagine subtracting 13x from both sides in order to cancel out that positive 13x. So if I subtract 13x from both sides of the equation, I get 2y equals negative 13x plus 7. Then to get y by itself, I need to divide everything by 2. All right, that'll give me a 1y, which is the same thing as just having y. So divide 2y by 2. The 2 divides out. Negative 13x divided by 2. It's negative 13 over 2x. 7 divided by 2 is a positive 7 over 2. So there it is in slope-intercept form. Okay, so we wrote it in two different forms. Great. Let's talk about the last topic here that we need to discuss, which involves intercepts. Okay, we kind of mentioned that a second ago, but let's really kind of dive into it. Okay, referring to x-intercepts and y-intercepts. All right, so what is an intercept. Let's think about the graph for a second. We call these linear. So if I draw a straighter line than that, not much better, but whatever. Let's uh, say we have a linear equation that, I don't know, looks like this. Okay, we call them linear because they look like lines, right? If you graph them, they're lines. Uh, notice though, typically they're going to end up crossing the axes, right? It crosses the x-axis here. Well, guess what? That's my x-intercept. And if you think about it even further, think about that point. We don't know what the x value is, right? I mean, our line could have just as easily been right here, right? We, we don't know where the line is. But notice something about those um, x-intercepts. The y value is 0 always. The y value is always 0. So the x-intercept, you find some value for x when y is 0. Let's think about the y-intercept. Well, that's where it crosses the y-axis. But notice something about those points. The y-value can be anything, right? But notice the x-value. The x-value has to be 0, right? So the y-intercept are the points where the x-values are 0. Okay, so that's just kind of a background, like some little background information. Let's actually go ahead and do an example where we need to find the x and the y intercept. Okay, and that's actually really helpful for trying to graph the line. Okay, so our third example. Here is an equation. 8y minus 6x equals 24. I want to find the intercepts, specifically the x-intercept and the y-intercept. And then I'm going to plot the points. Okay, so we just said the x-intercept is the point where you look for x, but the y is 0. x can be anything, y is 0. Sometimes people get that confused, right? They think x-intercept, let me plug in 0 for x. And no, that's not a good thing to do, right? Because again, we're not looking for y, we're looking for x. So it's the x-intercept because we're looking for x. Okay, so... I look at my equation. Okay, we've done this before. Just plug in 0 for y and find the missing x value. 
plug in 0 for y. There's my equation with 0 for y. And solve for x. When it's in standard form, this is a lot easier than if it's in a different form. 8 times 0 cancels out. I'm left with negative 6x equals 24. To get x by itself, I need to divide both sides by negative 6. Negative 6x divided by negative 6 is x. 24 divided by negative 6 is negative 3. So negative 3 comma 0 is my x-intercept. Okay, what about the y-intercept? Okay, we said this earlier. The x value is always 0. We're looking for the y. So using the same equation, 8y minus 6 times x, we're saying x is 0 this time, equals 24. Negative 6 times 0, haha, -ha, cancels out. 8y equals 24. Divide both sides by 8. 8y divided by 8 is y. 24 divided by 8 is 3. And I'm just realizing how stupid I am, so let me go back for a second. Oh yeah, that's what happens when the coffee wears off. 24 divided by negative 6 is not negative 3. I promise, I went to college. I went to college for a long time. It's negative 4. Maybe I went to college for too long. Okay, so there we go. X-intercept is negative 4 comma 0. Uh, excuse my stupidity, and y-intercept is 0, 3. Great. Okay, so now let's plot those points. Negative 4 on the x means 4 to the left. Up 0. Okay, well, we just talked about it. It has to be on the x-axis. That's what the x-intercept is. The y-intercept, 0, comma, up 1, 2, 3. There's my y-intercept. And then let's go ahead and draw the line through those points. Okay. So anyway, the line represents all the points that um, satisfy that equation, right? So I can plug in any point along this line, and it would work. However, all I needed was the x and the y-intercept to find that line. All right. Let's see. Let's go to another example. Example 4. Let's do the same thing. Find the x-intercept, find the y-intercept, and then plot them. Okay, so 5x plus 5 equals negative 5y plus 5. That's a lot of 5s. Okay, let's just go ahead and find the x-intercept first. We should always just plug in 0 for y and solve for x to do that. So 5x plus 5 equals negative 5 times 0 plus 5. I like when that happens. So 5x plus 5 equals 5. Okay, i got to cancel out this plus 5 here, so subtract 5 from both sides. Cancels out on the left. 5 minus 5 is 0. Sometimes people panic, right, whenever the whole side cancels out. Don't panic, it's just zero, right? Zero means nothing's there, which is exactly what happened. Okay, then divide both sides by 5 to get rid of the 5 in front of the x. 5x divided by 5 is x. 0 divided by 5 is 0. 0, 0. Ah, oh, interesting. Think about that for a second. We plugged in 0 for y, we got 0 for x. But when 0 is x, that's also my y-intercept, right? So this is actually going to be the y-intercept as well. Uh, let's say you didn't see that right away, though. And if you didn't, that's okay. I don't blame you. Um, 5, well, well, first of all, um, to find the y-intercept, you plug in 0 for x and solve for y. So 0 for x. That's gone. So I'm left with a positive 5 is equal to negative 5y plus 5. Need to get rid of this 5 this time, so I'm going to subtract 5 from both sides. Of course, that allows me to cancel it out on the right. 5 minus 5 on the left, though, is nothing, so 0. 
So zero is equal to negative five y. Divide both sides by negative five. Zero divided by negative five is zero, as we expected. Negative five y divided by negative five is y. So y is zero. So the x-intercept and the y-intercept end up being the same point, which makes it really hard to graph the line. Think about that. x-intercept, y-intercept. Same point. I have no idea what that line looks like, right? It could be anything. So I need to find another point. And so here's where you get to be creative. People don't like to be very creative, but sorry, this is just how it is. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is make up a, an x value. Just make one up. Okay, I'm gonna use one. Okay, why not? Make up an x value and then find a y value. You could do negative one, you could do negative two, you can do a positive two, doesn't matter, okay? Just don't use zero, because we already did that. All right, so I'm gonna use one because it's easy to work with, okay? So let's plug in one for x and find the y value that goes with it. Okay, so now we're not finding an intercept, we're just finding a point that works for this equation. Okay, well, five times one is five. Five plus five on the left is 10. So that kind of simplifies a little bit. And you had to get rid of this plus five here, I'm trying to get y by itself, right? So I'm gonna subtract five from both sides. 10 minus five is five. Uh, negative five y plus five. Well, five minus five is zero, so they canceled out. Divide both sides by this negative five here. Five divided by negative five is a negative one. And negative five div y divided by negative five is just y. So when x is one, y has to be a negative one. So again, that's not an intercept, but that's a point that I can plot and that gives me a second point. And so since I have a second point now, I can actually graph my line here. All right, let's do, let's do one more. So we have 5y minus x equals negative 5 plus x. And 5 plus x is in the parentheses, OK? So that, you got to be careful there. All right, so let's find the intercepts and plot it. Well, I don't like it in the form that it's currently in. I'm going to go ahead and take this understood negative 1 right here and distribute it, because those parentheses make me nervous. So I'm going to take care of parentheses. So if I distribute the negative one, I get, well, five y minus x on the left, negative five minus x on the right. All right, and while I'm at it, um, let me put it in either standard form or into uh, slope intercept form. Just because at this point, I'm already simplifying it. Let me simplify it all the way. And I'm doing this for a reason, right? It actually, if I can make it easier, I might as well. So I'm going to try to get y by itself, which means I need to first cancel out that x, right? So I will add x to the left and to the right. And I'm writing it out on purpose here, right? Because sure, I accomplished my goal here, but look what happened on the right side. Same thing. X is not even playing a role in this problem. So I wanna talk about that, okay? Uh, divide both sides by 5, y equals negative 1. Okay, by the way, this would be considered standard form since there's no x. Uh, you can imagine the x is over here, right? 0x plus 5y equals, you know, blah, 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 blah. So that would be standard form. And this is slope-intercept form um, down here, if you imagine this as 0x uh, minus 1, right? But we're not going to write it like that. We don't need to. Okay, so y equals negative 1. Think about what that's saying, okay? People sometimes panic when they see this, but don't panic. 
y equals negative 1 just means that y is always negative 1. Doesn't matter what x happens to be. Okay, so think about that. y is just always negative 1. All right, so let's actually try to answer the question now. By the way, notice I'm kind of just leaving this old equation behind, right? I'm not even worried about this one. Uh, because these two equations are the same graph. Okay, that's the part that people don't tend to grasp right away. They're the exact same thing. One just looks a lot nicer than the other one. One is easier to read than the other one. It's kind of like, I don't know, you're reading a book. You know how sometimes people will take a whole page and a half to say one little thing, right? Uh, you could either say it in a full, you know, four paragraphs right here, or you can just say it in like, you know, three words. That's basically what's happening here. They're the exact same graph. They have the exact same properties. Okay, so y equals negative one. Let's answer the question that I was gonna ask originally. I'm gonna go hitting the wrong button again. There we go. The x-intercept and the y-intercept. Okay, so the x-intercept we said is the point where y is zero. What's the x value? Well, there's a couple of things wrong with that, okay, if you think about it. Um, number one, we just said y is always negative one. So y actually cannot equal zero. We don't have an x-intercept. So, Hawks wants you to type in the word absent or click the word absent. We don't have an x-intercept. Another thing could have, the way you could have figured it out is if you went and tried to plug in zero for y. Zero equals negative one. Well, that's no good. That doesn't make any sense. So that, that would be a, another tip right there, right? Another clue that there's no x-intercept. You could always go back to the original and try to figure it out from there and you'll run into the same exact problem. All right, so no x-intercept. What about a y-intercept? What's the y value when x is zero? What do we say? Y is always negative one, right? So it's gonna be negative one. That's what that equation is saying. Because even if you look at it and try to plug in zero, there's no x. So where do you plug it in? You, you can't, so you're just left with y equals negative one, right? So no worries there. My y-intercept is zero, negative one. So then we're at uh, back to this issue. Let's say I wanted to graph this thing. Okay, I have zero, negative one. Well, where do I put the other point? Oh no, okay, this actually doesn't take a whole lot of thinking. I need another point, just like in the last example. Pick any value for x. Let's go with four, I don't know. First thing that came to mind, four. Well, what's y? Well, we said this enough times now, right? Y is always negative one. That's what that equation means. Again, go back to the equation. Y equals negative one. Where do I plug in the X? Where do I plug in four? There's nowhere to plug it in. I'm just left with a negative one. All right, so I plot that point. One, two, three, four. Maybe you can see it now. Maybe if I drew it better, you'd see it. I'm not that great at drawing this part, but oh well. Here we go, we have a horizontal line, okay? And so that's actually the takeaway from this. Okay, sure, we looked at the x-intercept. There's not gonna be an x-intercept because you have a perfectly flat line. It's never gonna be able to go up and touch the x-axis anywhere. And it's only gonna cross the y-axis once. So there we go, we have any y equals just a number, right? No x, if there's no x, we'll always give you a horizontal line. Okay, so that's the takeaway from that. And to graph it, you just find a second point, pick any number for x, anything, right? Just not zero, because you just did that with the y-intercept. Pick any number for x and put the y value there, and then you can graph it. All right, so that would be the end of this section, linear equations and two variables.